Hello and welcome to the video where we're going to be looking at refractive index and calculating this using Snell's Law. So first I just want to do a quick recap because there's quite a lot of information that you have to remember to be able to do these sort of questions um, properly. So we have our normal going along here, this is our light ray that's come in and been refracted when it's um, either entered or left the um, block here, this could be a glass or a block of glass, plastic or water, and outside we have air. So we have our angle of incidence measured against the normal, angle of refraction measured against the normal, against the normal, against the normal. So I is the angle of incidence and R is the angle of refraction. So when we're moving from air into glass, plastic or water, um, I is going to be greater than R, is going to be refracted towards the normal, and when we're moving out of it, is when we refracted away from the normal. If you'd like to know more about why, I have made a video on um, how and why this happens. So the next thing we need to know is the critical angle. So when I is less than the critical angle, we have partial reflection. We have some being um, reflected back and we have some being uh, transmitted and refracted. When I is equal to the critical angle, it all travels along the line here. And when I is greater than critical angle, we have total internal reflection. So these are the rules that I always like my students to use when answering uh, maths questions in physics. Um, I've done a lot of um, marking maths questions and I think these will help you get all of the marks. But very briefly, your first mark is for formula, your second mark is for working, third mark is for the answer, and your fourth mark is for the units. So we're going to be looking at two equations today. Uh, both of these equations are in the formula sheet for AQA, but not for Edexcel. So the refractive index, which can also be written as N, is equal to sine of I over the sine of R. And the refractive index is also equal to 1 over sine C. In all the questions I'm going to be doing today, I'm going to be combi combining both of these equations just to make it that a little bit harder. Um, in the exam, they will probably only ask you to use one equation Maybe they'll be asked to use to both, but that's unlikely. So when I'm writing these equations, I'm going to use N for refractive index and C for the critical angle. Um, abbreviation is made for a reason, and it's much easier for me to write N than it is to write refractive index out. So the equation that I'm going to start with is N equals sine I over sine R. So N equals... Uh, 0.27 divided by 10 sine 0.177 so n equals n equals 1.6 now I've rounded um, to a certain number of significant figures here you should always try and round to the same number that they have in the question so the next equation that we're going to be using is n equals 1 over sine c. So we know n, that is 1.6, 1 over sine c. We need to do a little bit of rearranging. So 1.6 sine c equals 1, or sine c equals 1 divided by 1.6. Let me just move that all up and out of the way. So C uh, sine C equals one divided by one point six, which equals zero point six two five. Inverse side of that gives me thirty nine degrees. So here we're given um, I and R again. So N equals sine i over sine r, n equals 50 sine is 0 0.8 divided by uh, 20.3 sine is 0 0.3, so n equals 0 0.8 divided by 0 0.3, 2.7, so n equals 1 over sine C, finding the critical angle now, 2.7 equals 1 over sine C, 2.7 sine C equals 1, 
sign C equals 1 over 2.7. Sign C equals 1 divided by 2.7. 0.3 so C equals 21.7 degrees so a light ray approaches Brock at 49 degrees that is going to be I and refracts at 29.1 that is going to be R find the refractive index and the critical angle so N equals sine i divided by sine r so n equals i is 49 49 sine that is 0 0.75 divided by 29.1 sine that is 0 0.49 so 0.75 divided by 0.49 equals N equals 1.53. So now we found M, we can find the critical angle. So N equals 1 over sine C. So 1.53 equals 1 divided by sine C. And I'm going to take a bit of a shortcut here. Sine C equals 1 divided by 1.53. Sine C equals 1 divided by 1.53. 0 0.65 so C equals 40.8 degrees when you're doing these in the exam um, it's best not to do what I'm doing here and actually write down an answer around it if you can store numbers in your calculator and then use them later that's the best thing to do because you're going to get the um, best answers like that, the most accurate answers like that. If you're writing answers down to a different number of significant figures than I am and getting something that's ever so slightly different, it is because of rounding errors. So if N equals 1.3 and R is 23, <coughs> find R and C. So N equals sine I over sine R. N equals 1.3 sine 23 divided by sine r um, I, it, it really depends on whether you want to do your rearranging first or your maths first um, I'm going to do my rearranging first here so sine r um, times 1.3 equals sine 23 sine r equals sine 23 divided by 1.3 Sine R equals 23 sine equals 0 0.39 divided by 1.3. So sine R equals 0.3. So R equals 17.5 degrees. Um, so now I'm going to work out the critical angle. My next uh, equation is N equals 1 over sine C. I know what N is um, from up here. It is 1.3 equals 1 over sine C. So sine C equals 1 divided by 1.3. 1 divided by 1.3 equals... 0 0.77, so C equals inverse sine 50.3 degrees. So N equals 1.1, R is 4, find I and C. Um, so let's find C first of all because we have all the information we need for that. N equals 1 over sine C. So 1.1 1 .1 equals 1 divided by sine c. So sine c equals 1 divided by 1.1. 1 divided by 1.1 equals 0 0.91. Inverse sine of that equals 65.4 degrees. 
So now to find i, um, n equals sine i over sine r, uh, 1.1 1 .1 equals sine i over sine 4. Um, so I'm going to rearrange it, but I'm going to move sine i over to this other side because um, that's why I like it. So I'm going to do 4 sine times 1.1 1 .1 equals 0.077. So inverse sine is equal to 4.4.